friends? So over on Patreon, I support Courtney Diaz, or Little Raven Inc., and at the start of the year, she put out the call to her supporters for monthly challenges for her to do. And Crystal, whose YouTube I will link below, suggested doing the Couch Bag Challenge, uh, which is really cool. It's kind of like, as Courtney describes it, and as the stationery cafe people describe it, it's like having a capsule wardrobe for your stationery. So for a month at a time, you only work with what is in your couch bag or your pouch or whatever you've put everything in. And I was super on board with that. That's already pretty much how I journal because I tend to go light on the ephemera and I like having everything all in one place anyway. Uh, and I also just did a giant studio clean out, so it was very timely for me because I don't have that much left over now. But I think some people, if they, if they go on Patreon and watch Courtney's video and she's putting everything in this little Delphonic size M pouch, they might think that I have an unfair advantage with this chonky boy right here. But <laughs> I'm going to unpack it for you and you can see for yourself. I made this pouch myself. I did base it on the Bow Binder Accessory Organizer from Sticky Club, which I also own, but I hate the feel of pleather and I wanted something a little bit bigger. So this is basically eight and a half inches by 11 inches by four inches. And that's one inch bigger than the bow in every dimension. So it's got a lot of room. And I used waxed canvas and leather and I hand stitched the whole thing. And before you ask, I am not making any more of these. No way, I bled for this one, it was too much of a pain in the butt to be anything other than a one-off labor of love. So this is everything. I use everything in here pretty regularly and I have curated a bunch of it and I'll go through it now. So I made myself a little tear-off calendar for January. I don't think I'll do it again because I definitely haven't journaled the whole month, but it was fun. It's just kind of wasteful to have the days that I don't journal left over. So I'll probably come up with some other solution to get my dates in there. But this was a fun exercise and I really like how they turned out even though my inks bled and it got weird. Most of my ephemera and tapes are in here. I've got some washi samples. I have more washi in here that I'll get to in a minute. I have some Little Raven Ink collage sheet stickers. I have the tabs that I always make myself. And I have some stickers that I made myself out of my hand card stamps. And then in this side, oh, I've got my two pencil boards to slide under my pages and protect the pages underneath. On this side, I have a little bit of vellum, a little bit of tracing paper. This is something that I'm going to kind of bend the rules on because you're not supposed to restock in the couch bag challenge, but I'm sure that I will have to come back and put more tracing paper in here. So that's something I'm going to kind of cheat on. I'm not, God knows I've tried, I am not a sticker journaler at all. <laughs> really, I've tried. But I do have these letters that I enjoy. I've got a few of my moon sticky notes that I especially love to use on a full moon when I'm journaling. And then I've got this one sheet from Sticky Club that I'm still holding on to that I'm slowly working my way through, but I really love that postal stamp design. Otherwise, I just tend to make my own stickers and my own ephemera, and I just, I never got into it. I'm not like that with my stationery. So that all slides. Right share. That goes there, and that goes there. I've got my clips to hold down my pages. I have my standby pen roll that is still kicking, even though this strap is getting a little threadbare. And not a whole heck of a lot has changed in here since the last time. And yes, I absolutely did strategize ordering this waxed canvas to match this canvas. I mean, wouldn't you? I've got a jelly roll. This is the 08 size for my highlights. 
I have not put any pencils in here. Instead, I've got a Pentel eight color pencil with two millimeter colored leads in it. And this was invented for teachers, I guess, for grading. Um, but I actually found this one in an art supply store. And I had something very similar to this that was like an off-brand kind of knockoff, but it was super flimsy and the clip kept falling off. So I was really glad to find this one that's actually made by a decent company and hasn't had any trouble yet. And I loaded it with these two millimeter lead refills from June Gold. There's 36 colors. Saves me from having to carry a sharpener. Saves me from having to have my my Malou pencil bag, that would take up a lot of space. And that way I have just eight colors to choose from for the pencil. The other thing I love about the Couch Bag Challenge is that I feel like self-limitations are really the key to unlocking creativity. So curating which supplies you use, curating your palette is gonna unlock a lot of that. And it's just good exercise. This is one of the Saxa Poche, Poche, Kokuyo scissors. I just got these a few months ago and I was excited because they don't have a lid for me to lose. They do tend to stick a little bit, but so far it hasn't been a huge problem. I'm still on Prima Planner glue, which they don't make anymore. So I ordered something similar that has the same low profile. It's not quite the same glue. It doesn't stick quite as well as this, but it is as close as anybody can get anymore. I've got my Traveler's Company Factory Green Brass Fountain Pen. I've got a little kneadable eraser. It goes inside one of my brush tubs, which is really just a um, florist's, you can see that, miniature water vial basically for keeping flowers fresh and on that I put one of my little clips that I make. I've got the Alvin Draftmatic in a 0.7 millimeter lead size which I had always looked at. I've always wanted the Mab Graves ones but you can't find those anymore. I picked this one up in a store a couple months ago and like one click and I was sold. Like it just, it clicks so nicely. That's such an important quality in a mechanical pencil. I've got the Pentel Aquash in size large. I have a number eight, even though it's rubbed off, number eight Escoda Reserva brush, which is pretty much my workhorse that I use for basically everything. I've got a newish one, new to me. This is off Amazon. I can't remember the brand name. It was something like Dabby's. I will link it though. And this is a little dagger brush. It's a quarter inch and it is sable and it holds a lot of water and I have really been enjoying it. And then of course, what the brushes are used for. I know I just did my winter palette video, but it has already changed. I've taken out the Soda Light Genuine and I have put Shadow Violet back in. I briefly had Jasper Stardust Indigo Genuine Paint in here, uh, and that was fun, but now it's done. And I think that's a bad, I think that might be the only change, actually. I think everything else is still in here. So that's still serving me really well. And I have anticipated using a couple other things over the next month as far as writing utensils things like that so i have this pouch from two belmont sisters still one of my favorite pouches of all time it's got the little exterior pocket and then the zipper one so out here i've got my favorite lettering pen which is the pentel sign touch pen it's got the fude nib on it i've got four of the Acrylograph 0.7 millimeter acrylic pens, which I ordered two sets of, and I really liked almost all the colors in them, and I like how they perform better than Posca's, so I'm in favor of those. I did not do like an unboxing or review or anything because I am not going to say that they are worth what they're charging for them, but they will be worth it when they are available individually. Like I would pay $3.50 each for one of these, but
but the having to pay the same in increments of 10 of them, it's just not, it's not cost effective. I just don't like it. I can't recommend that to anyone who's not completely stationary obsessed and making it part of their personality. I have several Rishon Petit brush pens, which I recently picked up and really enjoy the earthy colors and the very pale colors in these sets. So I've got cream yellow. This should be silver gray. This should be brownish gray. Rosewood. They don't put the names on these, of course. Aqua gray and celadon. I do want to incorporate more hand lettering in my journaling. Um, I really enjoy seeing what Mitz from My Life Mitz does in her Hobonichi with the hand lettering, and that's something that I want to do more of. I've got two mild liners. This is blue-green, and this is gold. I've got the Art Alternatives Dual Tip, which I just saw at Joanne the other day, and I really loved this olive green. Their jewel tones are really nice. And then just in case, I've got my Traveler's Company stencil and a Micron 01 in black. There's utensils. Over here, I've got an extra mixing palette for my watercolors. This was just the lid to a kid's watercolor set at Barnes & Noble. And I gave my kid the watercolors and I kept the lid for myself because I'm absolutely shameless that way. Next over here, I made this little envelope to go with my pouch. And this is where I keep the homemade washi from my last video. I'm sure you'll recognize that. So I've got all of those in there right now. I have my watercolor rinse cups still kicking. The acrylic recently broke on this one, but I had an extra and it was thicker acrylic because that was my prototype that broke that was much thinner. Over here, I've got my favorite date stamp. There's a hilarious story about this date stamp that maybe I will tell you on my channel sometime. I've got a hand carved stamp that I'm kind of treating as like a chalk stamp where I just put it in the corners of my pages it's like a personal symbol. I have one color of archival ink. I'm going to change out the colors every month. I think that'll be fun. And then in this cute little tin, I have an experiment. I tried the Frugal Crafters recipe for making your own pigment paint. Uh, and used gouache and glycerin. And this is just one of the ink blenders from uh, Ranger, the little round ones that you stick on with the Velcro on the blending stick. And I stuck that in there and so far it works okay. We'll see how long it stays wet in this tin, which is not completely airtight. This is just a Tim Holtz tin. Over here I've got some refills. This is a reading glasses case. I think I picked it up from Barnes & Noble on clearance and just threw away the reading glasses. It's the Kickerland brand because they make so much cool stuff. This is the mechanical pencil refills. I use purple lead for my sketches. This is a needle tip and a fountain pen converter in order to refill from this ink sample and this is actually a refill for the glue sticks that I haven't even started using yet but I'm already carrying the refill around. Up here I've got my little hand stapler. It does the super tiny staples and I love the look of those and sometimes I'll go over them with an alcohol marker to make them a different color. I have recently downsized from a Kodak Mini 2 photo printer back to my beloved HP Sprocket, which is also still kicking, still making beautiful prints, and is much lower profile to carry around and doesn't have as much single-use plastic involved as the refills for the Kodak Mini 2. Is that everything? Did I get it all? I have so much in here. I think that's it. So yeah, I am super stoked to start using this pouch. I'm stoked to use everything up. I'm stoked to discover some new creative ideas 
using just these things for the next month. If you are thinking about taking the Couch Bag Challenge, leave me a comment and let me know what you're putting in your bag. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching.